Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates. The first one is Stefan Matala, who is out of the Mr. Olympia Classic Physique, and he is actually finally doing what a lot of people actually suggested he should do, he's switching to the Open. The photo that you're looking at right now has not been posted, this was sent to me by his coach, Patrick Tour. this photo, along with some others, and basically, at this point, I believe this was at like 5 weeks out of Mr. Olympia, he was at like 111 kilos, or like 250 pounds, and at this point, he was already basically conditioned enough. I mean, almost, almost. He was holding very little water, he, he looks very dry, and he's actually very lean, and he's like 25 pounds above his weight cap. And they were actually pushing very hard, they were actually trying to lower his weight as much as possible, but it just wasn't happening. And he was on a very, very small amount of gear. I can't say what exactly he was on and how much, but it was super weak and super low, if it is true, what Patrick told me. But, I mean, if it is, and if he's really struggling that much to lower his weight, he's uh, staying at around 250 with this kind of conditioning, then, yeah, it's pretty much pointless to, to try and make the weight for Classic. Now, let me read what Stefan actually posted on his story. Throughout the year, I put a lot of energy into building muscle, which I then have to lose with great difficulty to keep within my weight limit. I've reached a point where it's literally impossible to lose weight without completely destroying my physique. You have to be humble and realistic, I've reached a stage where it's literally impossible to lose weight without destroying my physique. My body hadn't responded to preparation for several weeks, and I couldn't take any health risks. A few weeks ago, I made the decision to start uh, my transition to a new category to avoid continuing to lose time. For this reason, I won't be taking part in Mr. Olympia this year, and I'm going to concentrate on the work we've started to change the category. Alright, so first I gotta say, it's very disappointing that he's not doing the Mr. Olympia. Personally, I had him in my top 5 at the Mr. Olympia this year. I thought he was gonna be that high because he is that good in classic. And he is not doing it. And I think this is like his uh, second or even third time, I'm not sure, that he's out of the Mr. Olympia, that he's announcing this like a couple of weeks before the show. I believe last year he just didn't show up and nobody knew that he was not gonna show up. So at least this year he announced this, he made an announcement and... Uh, yeah, he is out. Now, would he be able to actually make the weight? I think it would be possible, I'm pretty sure. Like, for example, last week there was the IIPB World Championships, Amateur Championships in Iran, and, like, one of my friends competed there in a category below 85 kilos. And the guys who competed in his category were, like, 10 kilos bigger than him. Because they actually cut, like, 10 kilos before the stage by dehydrating severely, doing saunas and all kinds of crazy stuff. You can actually lose, like, 20-25 pounds of water weight, like, in a couple of days before the show if you do extreme stuff. And then, like, in those couple of days before the show, after the weighings, you can actually bring the weight back up. But not everybody's willing to do that. It's extremely difficult. It's not really... I don't think it's a risk for your health if you know what you're doing, but it's, it's crazy hard on you. So, Stefan was not willing to do that. And also, like, he would have to lose some muscle as well. And as he says, he's trying very hard in the offseason to put the muscle on, and then he has to lose it. For what? Maybe he wouldn't even crack the top 10 on Mr. Olympia. Nobody's guaranteeing that he's going to be successful. So he just wasn't willing to, to suffer that much. I don't think it's a health risk, really, but he just wasn't willing to suffer. It's his decision. Me, as a fan, I am disappointed. I wanted to see him in Classic, but if he is not mentally able to suffer, to really suffer to make that weight, what can you do? I mean, the guy doesn't want to do it. So it is, it's, it's okay. It's what it is. Now, as far as him as an open competitor, how successful would he be? Will he be actually next year? I think he would be, he will be quite successful because this guy is 250 right here with his body fat, with his this much water. I mean, realistically, if he lost all this fat and all the water, he would he would be like 10 pounds away from the weight cap and then he could dehydrate severely with saunas and stuff, and he could make the weight, but, like, he's still a little bit bigger than a classic physique guy should be. So, in order for him to be successful in the open, he needs to put on a lot more muscle. 
However, with his uh, shape, with his uh, freaking massive and full arms and like with that chest and pretty good legs, uh, back is a weak area, but he can bring it up now, especially that he doesn't have a weight cap. So next year, what is the best possible outcome for Stefan in the Open? I don't think he can win a pro show next year. I mean, maybe he can be in the top three of some weaker pro shows, but... In order to win and to qualify for the Mr. Olympia, I mean, look at, like, Andrea Presti. He is unable to qualify. He is competing that often and, like, he is barely unable to qualify. So, like, some years he does it. This year, it seems like he won't be able to do it. You know, it, it's really difficult to win a pro show. And Andrea Presti is a lot bigger than Stefan Matala. So, I mean, the way things are right now, yeah, he definitely wouldn't place that high in an open show. But next year, after a longer off season, once he actually puts on more muscle... I can see him in a top three, best case scenario, of a lower level pro show, but in the future, like in the next five years or so, he can actually do very well in the open, he has the structure, he has the shape, I'm sure he has like a lot more potential than somebody like uh, Stanimal, and Stanimal was also a classic physique guy, and Stanimal placed second uh, at Vancouver Pro, I believe, uh, in the open division after uh, Hassan Mustafa, so I think uh, Stefan Matala will at some point win a pro show and go to the Mr. Olympia in the open, but it's gonna take him some time to put on a lot more muscle, I think he has the ability to put on muscle quickly, and I think he has the right shape and, like, structure for the Open as well. And, yeah, I think Open is uh, a better better fit for him than Classic. Since he's struggling so much to make the weight, it's pointless, you know. I can see him doing really well in the Open. Again, he is not, he's not super tall. He's, like, I don't know, 5 foot, maybe 9, and, like, 250 here. But imagine him at, like, 270 shredded at his height. Yeah, with his shape, with his structure... That's gonna be deadly. Can't wait to see that. All right, the next thing I wanted to talk about, you guys, is Nick Walker. And why is he not showing his physique? This is the first time ever since I've been following Nick Walker that he's actually not showing full physique updates, complete transparency. That's what Nick is usually like. He's showing everything, usually. This time around, he's hiding away. Why is he doing that? Well, there are two possible reasons. One of them is that he's bringing something crazy and he wants to surprise everybody. And the other one is that he's not happy with his current look and he's hiding because he doesn't want to show that he's not in shape and, you know, receive criticism. Which one is it? Well, it's very difficult to determine based on what he's posting. He's wearing these pump covers, long sleeve shirts. Like, he is not showing anything, basically. No skin. You can see a bit of his hamstrings here and, like, conditioning in the calves. And, you know, actually, it looks good. Like, it seems like he is very lean. But I don't know. I don't know what his midsection is looking like. I don't know what his lower back is looking like, his glutes and so on. Uh, like, I don't know how much fat and water he's actually holding. Uh, can we try and determine that based on his face? Having a dead face is usually a pretty accurate assessment of someone's conditioning before you actually see it. And in this case, you know, it's difficult with Nick because he basically never has a true dead face. His face tends to get a little bit, like, fatter, even when he's not very f fat, like, in the off-season. And, like, even when he is completely shredded, he never really has, like, that, that skull face that some bodybuilders have. So, you have to compare this to his off-season face. And as you can see right here, he does start to look very lean, right, for Nick Walker. There's a lot of guys who would look much, much leaner at the same body fat percent, like, in their body. But uh, for Nick's standards, I think this face is actually looking quite lean. And the longer I stare at it, I am more and more scared because <laughs> it seems that he is, like, in crazy focus right now. He has that killer mentality, dream killer, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and he, I think he is going to crush some dreams uh, this year potentially, uh, one or two, or maybe one more, maybe like four, five, we'll see, but there is like four or five guys who believe they can win the Mr. Olympia this year, and uh, Nick just might be the guy who is going to prevent them from doing that, it seems like he is very driven, very focused right now. And you guys must not forget what he was going to bring to the Mr. Olympia last year before his uh, hamstring tear. So two weeks out, this is what he looked like and this was absolutely nuts. And take a look at his face. 
You know, it's basically just as lean as it is right now, like close to it, close to it. So he, I believe he's bringing something insane, conditioning-wise. And at the same time, his uh, midsection, his waist is going to get smaller and tighter. And as long as he controls his belly, his bubble gut, he is going to be dangerous, very, very dangerous. Like, I can definitely see him taking out Andrew Jack, even though Andrew Jack is amazing, he is definitely not bringing the same conditioning as Nick Walker, and he is definitely not as good from the side and from the back. It's not even close. I mean, Andrew is going to beat uh, Nick from the front, but that's it. That's only like three or like four poses if you count most muscular. And I don't even know if he can beat him in, in most muscular, really. It also depends on what kind of conditioning Andrew Jack brings. He must be sharper from the back, a lot sharper. But, you know, I feel like Nick Walker is going to, like, surprise people. I think he's going to shock the world this year. Especially now that we have kind of low expectations from him after what we saw at the New York Pro, I think he's going to surprise a lot of people and show something insane, something nasty. And I think that's exactly the reason why he's hiding away right now, because he doesn't want to increase those expectations. He wants to keep them low and then just show up and blow away everybody. What do you guys think about that theory? Now, as far as Andrew Jack, uh, I mean, he's also the kind of guy that doesn't get super chiseled in the face, you know, he never had a dead face, no matter how conditioned he was, but you can also get the idea of, of how conditioned he is based on his face, because like in the offseason he gets super bloated, however now at this point he seems sharp, not just his face, but you can also see like his physique is kind of looking flat, you know, he doesn't look as full anymore, which is a good sign, great sign, you know, if he was super full in a t-shirt, I would be worried about his conditioning, but seeing him looking like this in a t-shirt and with his face like this, I feel like he's bringing the conditioning. And also based on what Dave Palombo said on Furabe's podcast, and he heard that from Chris Asito, who is Andrew Jack's coach, it seems like last year he, Andrew Jack went back to Nigeria between the, the Texas Pro and I think UK Pro and Mr. Olympia, and this year he is fully focused between these two shows. So it seems like this year he is going to be ready. He won't be off as he was last year at the Mr. Olympia. Based on his face and what we're seeing here in these photos, does he look like he is bringing it? I think he is. I think we're gonna see the best version of Andrew Jack on the Mr. Olympia. Where he's going to place, I mean, we'll see if anybody else in the top 5 comes in off or super on. It depends what these guys uh, show on that day on the stage, but I think Andrew Jack is certainly a top 5 bodybuilder this year. Where in the top 5? Be my guest, tell me down below. I will most likely have him in 5th in my prediction once I make it officially. But we'll see, we'll see, I mean, this, this Olympia is going to be crazy, guys, like, it's going to be so competitive, it seems like all of these guys, most of them at least, are going to be at their absolute best. Whatever is on your mind, tell us down below in the comment section, if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, for more content like this, guys, stay tuned, subscribe to this channel, thank you so much for watching, all the best, guys, and bye-bye.